James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, today we're going to do a quick overall solar and space weather update. Today being August 30th, 2025. Start out with our KP indexes. Measurement of the solar wind and plasma hitting different spots around planet Earth. These are on the surface of Earth. We'll start out with our Boulder KP index. It indicates that the last three hours we've been in a slight geomagnetic disturbance. Our Fredericksburg KP index says that really nothing has occurred as far as solar wind or plasma all day long, along with our estimated planetary index. This is the one that's used by NOAA and NASA and has been upgraded in the past year. Finally, our college index, the most sensitive, says that we had three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance about nine hours ago. Headed over to our GOES X-ray flux to see about solar activity, solar flares that might have popped off today. We see that we've had three M-class solar flares. We started the day at around 1400 UTC time with an M1.3 solar flare. That was generated by Sunspot 4197. It's the most complex type of Sunspot. It's called a Delta class Sunspot. That was followed by an M1.2 solar flare. It was generated right around 1600 UTC time, or really right at 11 this morning Central Time. Now we've just had a much stronger and longer term M-class solar flare. Looks like it was an M2.76. Both the previous ones were both generated by Sunspot Group AR4197, the Delta Class Sunspot Group. This appears to have been generated by AR4199, a simple Sunspot Group. Uh, it has not been assigned a sunspot, but I think we can all agree, after taking a look at GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager, that AR4199 was responsible for this longer duration M-class solar flare. Taking a quick look at the solar flare activity today over at Space Weather Live, you can see the flare that we just had, the M2.76, is the largest flare of the day and really the last three days has not been assigned a sunspot group yet but i think we'll be able to determine that ourselves the first two flares at 1400 and 1600 utc time or at 7 and 11 central time this morning came from ar4197 a delta class the most complex sunspot we know about delta class sunspot group we have a 20% chance of having an X-class solar flare today because of Sunspot Group AR4197, a 75% chance of having an M-class solar flare today. That ship has indeed sailed three times, and a 99% chance of having a C-class solar flare. Over to HMI Intensigram, we have a total of 10 Sunspot Groups Earth-facing. All of them are simple sunspot groups. You can tell by the color green. And we have one very complex delta sunspot, 4197, directly Earth facing. Now, again, 10 total sunspots, 9 simple sunspots. And we believe that large flare that just occurred came from 4199, which probably means it's becoming more complex. Also from today, this one has 11 total sunspots Earth facing. This one has added 4198 right here. It doesn't look like much and didn't appear on the other one. This one's missing 4207, but you can see it right here. And I guess there is one other difference. Again, this one has 11 sunspots Earth facing. 4204 was also completely diminished on that first one that we saw. Again, this one was added, 4207. This one was gone, and this one was taken off as well. So, it's a difference in the two renditions. 
All right, looking at NOAA's KP index forecast, the breakdown for August 30th, the 31st and 1st, they're saying that they have no space weather inbound. We might see something from the flares that we had today, but I don't think that they'll be here by the 1st, although that last flare might get here by the 1st and things might change. All right, over to Go Solar Ultraviolet Imager goes 19, 185 angstroms. We can clearly see the M flare was, in fact, from AR4199, a simple sunspot, and not from AR4197 down here, our Delta class sunspot group. Tells me that AR4199 is becoming more complex quickly. That was directly Earth-facing, by the way. All three of the flares today were. Over to Lasco C3, we do have one explosion here. Uh, and it seems to be really eclipsed by the limb of the sun. But it does, in fact, hit right there. Our goes C3 Lasco satellite lens, as you can see. It will hit it right about there. So, that might be slightly geoeffective towards Earth. We'll see how that looks. The timing on that, uh, well, let's see the timing on that, was around, well, looked like it was yesterday, really. Although it didn't hit the lens until about 11 UTC time, uh, which would be about 4 a.m. this morning, Central Time. All right, taking a look at the Space Weather Prediction Center. No, it's updated. Prediction Center costs the taxpayers a million dollars plus to update it. Today is the 30th, and they're thinking that Plasma is going to start the day out at around 2 and end the day out at around 4. 2 to 4. Going down the solar winds this has been updated, and that's strange because it's Saturday. They have solar winds starting at around just above 400 kilometers per second and perhaps ending the day close to 300 kilometers per second. So they have it from 2 to 4 and 400 to 300. Let's see how they did when we get there. All right, we are no longer in a polar cap absorption event. And in fact, we will be able to see at least that second M-class flare, which was right there. And we'll be able to see that last flare. This is our, whoa, we jumped into a polar cap absorption event and jumped out of one. It was very weak, but it looks like that's what happened. Let's take a look at that again. Crazy. Right when that flare hit, it did that to it. Crazy. So I guess when this larger flare hits, the same thing may or may not occur. Let's see. And there's the stronger flare there. And it does not bring us into a polar cap absorption event of any sort. It was mainly over the United States. Lots of x-rays for everybody. Lots of radiation for everybody. All right, looking at composites of the backside of our sun that's being Earth-facing and this being a day and a half old, it takes them all about that long to put this together, although it's, it would be simple to get a satellite back there. And we've had one back there many times, the Europeans have. You can see we have a huge sunspot group that's probably going to bust up into several 019 here in red, a small sunspot group 021 here in yellow, and a larger sunspot group, 022, here in green. Most importantly, this is a day and a half old, so y'all saw 4107 already named just now today, and it made it around. This is going to bust up into several sunspot groups, but we do have the tip of that already around the limb and already named. Over to our Discover Real-Time Solar Wind Satellite. It's the newest of the two that we use, Ace being the older one. We have plasma hanging out from about, well, 
We can go from two to four. There's a couple of spikes, but nothing out of the ordinary. I think they did a pretty good job on guesstimating that. And we do have one or two minutes that are actually above space weather threshold of 10 centimeters cubed. Uh, but those really are not enforced by, well, by the temperature here uh, and not really enforced here either. So this could be anomalies here. But basically they did all right, although it's a little bit higher, hotter than they thought plasma wise. It did start at around 2 and did end up a little bit higher than 4. Maybe it's going to end up around 5 or 6. There's 8 right there. Solar winds, they have them starting at 400 kilometers per second. They did a pretty good job there. Look at that. And ending the day out at 300 kilometers per second. Now, we haven't ended the day so they might dip down. I see temperature is dipping down and plasma is coming down too. I'll have to see how they do. But they expect them down much further here. Temperature has been normal and has become very mild over the last few hours. So they did an okay job with some spikes in plasma that weren't called for. And they did a pretty good job on the solar winds here as well. From 400 to 300 was their prediction. We're still a little high at 370, but we still have some time left in the day. All right, looking at our ACE real-time space weather satellite. Uh, we start the day out here, probably at right around 400 like they indicated. And it's headed towards, well, right above 350, 360 there. And they did think it would go down to about 300. So they didn't do a great job on the solar winds. Plasma is way low. They had it from 2 to 4, although there has been a few bumps in the road that have brought it up to about 6, 7, and 8 centimeters cubed. And these two readings here and here that bring it above the space weather threshold, we'll call those anomalies because they're just not really supported by any temperature spikes. That one's close, but it's really not lined up. And we're only talking about two minutes of data here. All right, over to STO HMI magnetogram. 4107 looks reverse polarity. Black over white, negative over positive. It's going to be a funky, funky week. You can see 4197. Down here that's generated to the inflows today, and then 4199 that just generated the larger M class longer term flare that we just looked at. Right, this one was taken at 606 this morning in central time. Looks like we have a coronal hole of some sort. Not a lot of the camera would be missing, but a coronal hole of some sort. 41.97 and 41.99 hanging out here and here. There is 41 or 42.07 that was just named. And we're not seeing some of the sunspots that are in this area here. 42.02, 42.03, etc. So here she comes. It should be a busy week. Surprise that we haven't seen a stronger flare thus far, but it's definitely still in the works. All right, over to the EESA, the European Space Agency, Euphoria. This has not been changed in over a week, but you know what? They ended up putting all this garbage in here with all this heavy plasma hitting the plant that never happened. And they've actually gotten lucky way back on the 30th today here with plasma down here at about 3 and going up to about 8. That is luck. Talk about serious luck. I don't know where any of this came from. Nothing like that occurred. And I don't know where the solar winds that they all thought were going to be inbound came from. There was no coral hole. Today it looks like we started at about 400. And we'll see how they did. And we went to about 350. Uh, let's 
Let's see, let's see how they did. So, uh, let's see if we can back that up. Let's that back up. My apologies. Try it one more time here. And we have our solar winds on the 30th. There we go. On the 30th, starting now, it's uh, about 375. Not bad. Again, they're getting very lucky here because this hasn't been, uh, well, none of this happened. And this hasn't been adjusted in over a week. And they did, in fact, go down uh, from 400 to 350. And, well, that's about what they have for the day. Again, complete luck because this never occurred. And finally, over to theplanetstoday.com, we have geomagnetic connection of Pluto, Sirius, Eris, Saturn, Neptune, very soon Uranus, uh, dates to really watch. Where I believe that we could have some real problems are going to be, I believe, the 9th and 10th here. Yes, the 9th, 10th. Those two dates right there. And the big date is going to be you now we actually pick up a geomagnetic connection to Uranus here on the 12th, 11th, 12th. And as the moon comes around, which is a big player in all of this, and it gets to this point here, the 20th through the 22nd, 20th, 21st, and 22nd, we really have an incredible lineup here. With two gas giants behind us, the moon in front of us in between the sun and earth, and then at a nine degree angle, we have Uranus. And this is the perfect setup for an uptick in volcanic activity, earthquake activity especially, and, well, solar flaring activity as well. We will do an update tonight on earthquake activity volcanic activity and overall weather on planet earth hopefully y'all join us at about 9 p.m that said god bless each and every one of y'all please share subscribe and always remember anything's possible bizarro world